Coach uh, Billy Kennedy. Coach, would you like to make some opening remarks? Uh, sure. Um, obviously, we're glad to be here. Uh, coming off two good wins and having been to the Sweet 16 a couple of years ago, we know how special an opportunity it is for us to continue to grow our program. And in order to do that, we've got to beat a good, very good Michigan team that's um, playing really well with 11 straight wins and got a good good streak going. And defensively and offensively, they pre present a lot of different problems. I'm sorry, uh, right here in the front. Right. Gabe Bach with Tex Ags. Billy, if you could just take us through how, how well your two bigs are playing right now in the matchups matchup nightmares that they can present an opponent. Yeah, um, Tyler Davis and, and Robert are playing extremely well, obviously, just being dominant in the paint offensively and defensively, and, and really just seems like I think we've gotten 80% of our rebounds uh, off of missed shots, which is a high number, and those two guys are, are the reason why. They're getting everything in their area. They're getting everything out of the area. And then offensively, they've been a fa factor in the post. And we've been able to power the last two teams we played against. And that's what's going to make this an interesting matchup because they're going to now have to go out on the floor and guard perimeter post and Robinson and Wagner, which presents, presents a challenge for us. Uh, Robert Morales, Southern California News Group. Uh, Coach, um, I was actually going to ask about your bigs as well, but now that he's asked that, um, your guard play has been pretty solid as well, uh, in particular Starks. Uh, can you talk about how well he's played so far in these first two games? For a kid whose first start was at, at Kansas, and he actually played pretty decent against Kansas, uh, he's come a long way in a short amount of time. To, to be a point guard at this level requires a lot of attention to detail and, uh, and usually a lot of experience on both ends to get this far. But uh, what he's been able to do offensively and defensively has been really tremendous for us. He's a threat offensively. He's not afraid. Again, sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it's, it, it, it can be a, a, a bad thing. And we've got to limit those moments when he gets out of control at times, as a freshman can, out, can, use, can do in, the, in these situations. But he's been a big factor of our success for sure. Mike Tierney, New York Times. Billy, with so many players coming and going during the season, were there times when it was difficult to plan for practice and games? And did you, did you ever get mixed up as to who was available on a particular day? Yeah, the, the biggest thing is, like you said, for practice and preparing to, for games, not having guys play, uh, and then starting freshmen in the SEC play, and those guys used to starting, and then that, we get the two guys back, and then all of a sudden those guys go to the bench. It was disruptive for everybody. And uh, just thankful these guys stayed the course and believed in what we were telling them and told them, hey, if we can keep, keep doing the right things and stay together through this time, then we got a chance to do something special because we knew we were talented and we knew we had, had some pieces that could, could take us a long way. Was there ever a day when you had to think hard about who, who you had and who is not available? Yeah, I mean, pl plenty of times because Robert Williams, he had a concussion at one point. He had the flu at one point, didn't play against LSU. Uh, we had knee injuries. We had suspensions, unfortunately. Uh, but our culture is very important to us in doing the right things and, and uh, growing as a program is, is very important to us. And so sometimes you got to go two step backwards to go one step forward. And fortunately, our guys bought in and grew up some, and that's why we're in this p position today. So when you were not in this venue, but in the same town two years ago for the Sweet 16, what is it about this group, and especially your leaders having already experienced the Sweet 16 that, that may make this particular team maybe that group that can advance to the Elite Eight for the well, first time in school history? I think the first time you, you get in a situation like this, you're celebrating and, and everything's about having fun. You want your guys to experience it all. And sometimes you experience too much of the success. 
Uh, what we've tried to do after beating North Carolina is, is talk to our guys about keeping their eyes on the prize. Our goal is to get to San Antonio, and whoever's in our way is what we need to be prepared for next. And Michigan presented that challenge, and this team's done a good job. Right after we beat North Carolina, obviously it was a great win in Charlotte, uh, but we've done a good job of putting that behind us and getting focused on the next challenge, which is uh, very well coached, Coach Beeline, Michigan basketball team. Real quick, uh, uh, because we're doing transcripts and, and doing this over the, uh, uh, the satellite, uh, if you do a follow not a follow-up question, but if you ask a quest, second question, please identify yourself again. Okay. Uh, Mike Tierney, New York Times. Billy, your team went from number five in the country to unranked. Uh, unfairly or fairly, your team kind of got the label as the underachieving team of the season, and now you're here. Talk about what that ride was like, and, and did you ever lose faith that, that the team could be here at this stage? Well, I never lost faith because it happened so early in the year. It was the beginning of SEC play, and I knew we lost two guys to knee injuries that we had a good chance to get back. And uh, the mistakes that were made that we had to handle, I believed that we could get it corrected, and, and I knew we had the pieces. Uh, the hard thing was, um, just like I talked to, talked about earlier, getting practice time, getting guys used to playing roles. We had, I think we, I figured we had nine different starting lineups this year. And so just getting a pecking order and getting a rhythm of, of rotations was, was, was key in the midst of SEC play, which is not the time we're going to be figuring that out. But uh, I think we've won nine of our last 13 games in league play, and we were able to figure that out and start playing well. And, and it was early enough in the year that I thought we could right the ship. And fortunately, fortunately, we were blessed to get that right. Josh, Peter with USA Today. A after your victory over North Carolina, Roy Williams <laughs> talked about the respect he has for courage you've shown and dealing with Parkinson's. And I wonder um, what, you, what it requires of you on a daily basis and how it's changed you. Well, every year in the spring and in the summer, I look for different opportunities to learn new things and uh, was blessed to experience a, a, a new procedure in spring and in the summer that um, has helped me get through this process and every year I've gotten better because of the new new medicines and the new procedures and different things you someone with my disease would go through. I've been blessed to have great support, nutrition, exercise, uh, and then I'm fortunate that my symptoms aren't as glaring as maybe some other people who have the disease. So I've just been blessed to, to have resources and accessibility in my position to, to have some advantages maybe some other people didn't have, and I'm very thankful. If I can ask a follow-up, Josh Peter with USA Today again. What's the new procedure, and what are your symptoms? Well, my symptoms are just like anybody that has Parkinson's. I, I get stiff, unfortunately, m massage therapy and acupuncture, I do a little bit of everything. And, and when you get in this situation, you do what you need to do to, to, to attack the disease. But fortunately, um, like I said, my symptoms aren't as glaring as other people's, and uh, I've been blessed from that standpoint. Let's go here, let's go here with the jacket. Hi, Brian Gillis, SB Nation. Coach, I'm sure you've had an opportunity to watch a lot of Michigan over the last few days. What are some of the things that jump off the film as challenges that they present you? Well, one, how good are they are defensively. I think their ball pressure defensively and how aggressive they are defensively on ball screens can present some problems against our offense because we set a lot of ball screens in our offense. And then I think their personnel, the ability to shoot the three at every position, especially the five position, is something that you don't see. And we're more of a traditional low post power team, probably more like Purdue um, is in, 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 in that league. And so they're a perimeter post league and, and more like Vandy in our league. So uh, that's where the, the challenges are going to be presented with our bigs being able to go out on the floor and guard them and maybe their bigs being able to guard our bigs in, inside. I think that's the biggest difference in how both teams will attack each other. 
Yeah, the rear against the wall. To bond us on the Washington Post, uh, you, you were talking before about how it's kind of been a one step forward, two step back at times season. And, and given obviously the, the stuff that you've been going through off the court, does it make, has it kind of changed your uh, perspective when you have a season like this where you have guys coming in and out of the lineup and you have all kinds of stuff going on that, you know, maybe 10 years ago you would have reacted a little differently to now you, there's maybe a different perspective on what's important? Well, I always thought we had good kids and I knew we had good players. And uh, so uh, probably 10 years ago, it would have given me more problems. But having go th when you go through things personally and you go through things in tough, tough times, basketball is really simple. And uh, the basketball part of it was easy. The, 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 the culture things in our program are very important. The suspensions bothered me more than the injuries. And, uh, but I think we, get, we, we, we corrected the things we needed to correct, and that's why we're here today. Any more questions? Okay. Thank you very much, Coach. All right, thanks. Let's welcome to the stage uh, Admon Gilder, uh, Tyler Davis, and Robert Williams. Questions for the players? Right here in the front. Gabe Bach with Tech Sachs for the two bigs, Tyler and Robert. If you could take us through this matchup, how interesting it is with their ability to stretch out on the perimeter, but obviously you guys' ability to bang it inside against them. Uh, we've guarded teams that can really spread the floor before, so um, it's really nothing new to us. But, uh, you know, they're a good team, and they play really hard. Um, they bring great effort, and, you know, we just got to stick to the game plan and guard them. Uh, i just say it's, uh, it's a unique matchup. Like he said, uh, we've played people, uh, bigs that can stretch and shoot the floor, but uh, we plan on dominating in the areas that we are uh, specifying. So just keep that mindset. Uh, right here in the front. Oh, you have the mic. Okay. Robert Morales, Southern California News Group. Uh, Robert, I'm curious. You guys, uh, you and, and Tyler, had big rebounding games in your first two games. When you look at the Michigan roster, is that something that you're confident you can keep up against Michigan? Um, honestly, uh, we we're always confident in our rebounding skills. You know, uh, no matter. The, uh, the task we got ahead of us, we feel like uh, we take pride in rebounding, and our coaches stress that that's a big part of us winning. So uh, I definitely feel like we could uh, control that part. Right here. Tyler, Mike Tierney, New York Times. Tyler, I think you were the only player who played in every game this year. With so many guys coming and going with injuries and suspensions, did you ever lose track on who was available, and, and did your confidence in the team drop in terms of making a run in March? No, I never lost track, and my confidence definitely didn't drop in my guys. I mean, we, we had a great summer. Um, the young guys did a great job of stepping up during those games. Um, we lost a couple, but I thought we had a great effort in practice leading up to those games, a great effort in the games as well. Um, so I think we handled the ups and downs as, as the best we can. When, when guys kept coming and going, did you ever think, what's going on here? Are we jinxed this season? Oh, no, I mean, 
it stuff happens. You go through it as a team, um, but you have to do the best you you can to uh, stay together and keep your head right. Right behind you, in the green, in the green. Thank you. Zach Taylor, sixteen twenty WTAW. Admon is a guy who's played the point at times uh, throughout your career, um, whether that's by necessity or not. How have you seen TJ grow in that position, and and how have you helped him along in that position? You know, TJ is a natural scorer, and that's what he is. And so um, I think you know we adjusted as time, as time went. And so uh, you know, we, I told him, you know, just go out there and play your brand of basketball. And uh, you can see it's benefiting our team because he gives us another weapon from the point guard position to be able to score in. And I think he's done a great job of uh, with his composure. You know, he's he's a, a super confident guy. So uh, we just tell him, you know, just show it out on the court. And, you know, just do your thing. Gabe Bach with Tech Sacks for Admon. What have you seen on tape from Muhammad Ali Abdurrahman specifically and his ability to score the ball in a, a variety of ways? You know, they set a lot of uh, up screens, ball screens for him, and so um, they do a great job of slipping out too. So uh, that, that kind of throws the uh, you know, defenders off because, you know, you don't know, you're, you don't know if they're, you know, setting a ball screen or, uh, or if he's slipping. So uh, I think he's a great player. You know, he's uh, able to score from uh, all three levels. He's able to get to the basket. He's able to pull up in mid range and, you know, shoot the three very well. So it will be a nice matchup that we you know we're looking forward to. Mark. Tyler, uh, Mark Wicker from the Southern California News Group. When you started developing your footwork and all the post moves, you know, back in high school or maybe even before that, were there players that you looked at on TV and said, I want, I want to be able to do what that guy does, uh, you know, when you were growing up? Uh, yeah, I liked Tim Duncan a lot when I was young. Um, just guys, when, when I was younger, I really wasn't above the rim at all. So I just used to watch guys that I didn't see that were high flyers. But, yeah, I think I looked up to Timmy the most. He has great footwork, great face-up game. Um, but, you know, I just try to do the best I can to use my body when I was younger. So it just kind of came along. Are there any? Oh, right here. Gabe Bach with Tex Ags. Tyler, a lot of people don't realize you grew up in California. You spent a lot of time here growing up. You were here two years ago for the Sweet 16. What would it mean to you to not just get to the Sweet 16 in California, but to, to go beyond that, to go where no, nobody in this school has ever gone before? It means a lot. Um, you know, I feel like right now we're paving our own way, but, you know, I'm in the moment. Um, you know, we got a game coming up, and that's all I'm looking forward to right now. But it's, it's exciting. I love being back here. I uh, love the weather. I just love, you know, seeing the city. Mike Tierney, New York Times for Robert or Admon. When you guys were 0-5 in the SEC, did you have a team meeting? Uh, did you talk about how we can get this right? What What was the... What was going on during that time? Uh, we had a uh, we had a couple team meetings, you know. Um, we just felt like everyone was kind of uh, branching out, you know. Uh, when things started to fall apart, they were doing their own thing. So um, we just had to buy into uh, knowing we're all here for each other, you know. Uh, letting the coaching staff know too, uh, along with the players, uh, we're here for a mission. Uh, I was uh, that was at the time where I was in and out of you know uh, treatment and stuff like that, so I wasn't really with the team a lot. And um, like I told, uh, we, I think we actually did have a team meeting, and uh, I think the main thing was you know just uh, next game, you know, because uh, my freshman year we went through a stretch where we lost five games when we was five in the country, and so it's, it's capable of happening to anyone. So, any final questions? Okay, thank you, gentlemen. I'd like to introduce uh, Adam. This, this is Adam Quisenberry. He's the A&M Basketball Information Director. If you need any further information, any further needs from the 